Are we going with that one? Okay. Cool. safe to take over this time? Or not safe? Yeah, I don't think I'm not going to take over the whole thing. I think we're getting stranded. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'm tossing it down. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I need I need the starting lineups at some point. I don't. I mean, I don't need them. I I, I need them for just for the game. Okay. Do you hear me about the uh, that that I am gonna need? We need to know who's on the field. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's kind of hard if you don't have the. Uh... There we go. Uh... Roland may have him. We're, we're, Weldon we're... is starting tonight. Uh... Perfect. Hold on. We'll see if UCF women's soccer is tweeting. So them Weldon's out. starting. Sophie oh, Gorman's not even go. starting.
We welcome you to Gettler Stadium in Cincinnati for the 2017 American Athletic Conference opener between the Cincinnati Bearcats and the UCF Knights. Alongside Roland Garenzoy, I'm Kit McConico, and Roland, the eighth all-time meeting between these two teams, both teams with three wins in the series. And for UCF, the visitor, ranked number 14 in the country, well, they are perfect 4-0 in American Athletic Conference openers. Well, this team is absolutely stacked all over the field. Uh, tons of talent in their starting 11, uh, but they're hungry as well, and that's a deadly combination for any one of their opponents. And for the Bearcats, off to their best start ever in program history, and well, the last two times they faced the Knights, they're 2-0 and in those last two matchups. Well, that speaks to their character. They're extremely gritty, but also extremely technical, and uh, they're just a very talented side. Uh, they're going to be a, really ch a real challenge for this UCF team. We now take a look at the keys in tonight's game first for UCF. Well, for UCF, they really need to build on the momentum coming off of a four-game win streak as well as a win over number four, North Carolina, their first win over a top five opponent since 2009. But they've only kept one clean sheet this season. They really need to stay compact defensively. And now our keys for the home team. Well, UCF has a very dangerous strike force in Dina or Orshman and Megan Ferreira. They really need to stay compact defensively, impose their will on that attacking line of UCF. They also need to give their star player Sophie Gorman the freedom to really run the show in midfield. She'll be their most dangerous player today. Take a look at the key players first for the Knights. Well, for UCF, again, we mentioned her earlier, Dina Orschman, the German Youth International, has two goals and an assist in four games played this season. She also scored the equalizer in that win over number four, North Carolina. And now the player to keep an eye on for the Bearcats. Again, as we mentioned earlier, Sophie Gorman in midfield. She's got three goals and an assist this season. Uh, she scored in Cincinnati's come-from-behind victory over Purdue just a couple weeks ago. And I think she really has a winner's mentality with an Ohio State championship under her belt back in her high school days. Kickoff from Gettler Stadium when we return on the American Digital Network. People say we're big. Wow. Well, what is big? This is big. It's an energy. An opportunity. This is big, baby! So go on. Dream big. Because big is just the beginning. I got it. Spec. <laughs> For every hero, there is an origin story. An experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling. Offering a different kind of education. One guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. Welcome you back to Gettler Stadium in Cincinnati as we now check in with the third member of our broadcast team, Matt Schumacher, who was able to speak with both head coaches just moments ago. Thanks, guys. Well, for as much talk as there's been this season about the UCF offense, their back line has been equally as impressive. And Coach Sahadak told me that her center back duo of Salsa and Fredrickson is the best she's ever had. And for a team that likes to build from the back, they'll play a vital role in tonight's game. And on the other side for UC, off to their best start in program history with six wins and no losses, the key leadership. There's a saying in this program that your talent can never be better than your work rate. The leadership group is bought into that mantra. They must outwork the Knights tonight to come away with a win. Thanks, Matt. Uh, he's exactly right about that. The best start ever in Bearcats program history. They fell last week looking to get back in the win column. And they would love to get a victory here to start conference play. Coach Stafford, well, got his 150th victory not too long ago, 375th ever in Bearcats women's soccer. As we are moments away from getting started, the Bearcats will have the opening kick. And there we go. Welcome all of you joining us on the American Digital Network, live from Gettler Stadium in Cincinnati, the Bearcats and the Knights. Well, it's really going to be up to the Knights to impose their will early. They're playing away from home. So they really want to start this match off with some momentum. That's exactly right, Roland, and trying to get a good start. Both of these teams 
They are physical teams. Another thing Coach Stafford said, he goes, once you get into conference play, the physicality, the intensity just amps up. That's exactly right. And so for these underclassmen, especially the freshmen, this is going to be new. They played in some big matches, but getting going in conference is a totally different ball game. Well, it's interesting to see Sophie Gorman as uh, one of the leaders on this team, a freshman herself. Seeing some of those freshmen get big minutes. Throw will be to the Knights, the visitors, in the all-black home team in the gray tops. White shorts, long throw down the line. Able to find a Knight after the deflected header. Height roping the sideline will stay in play. Now, Bearcats looking to get things going the other way. Went back very nicely. Looking to play it down the line, but intercepted yet again. And right now, UCF dominating possession, looking to take advantage early. Both teams early on in this game are just going to, going to want to keep possession, really settle on the ball. And impose their will on the, on the opposing team. Yeah, you saw Ferreira there, one of the players we mentioned. Both of her goals this season, game winners. We mentioned Orshman in the, in the open there. But again, Ferreira, just another talented striker in this UCF squad. As we said before, they're just full of firepower all over the starting 11. And for UC... Their best start in program history. Their first loss last week, they fell one to nothing to LSU. But since the start of 20, 2001, I should say, the Bearcats, they've upset five teams in the top 25, looking to make it six. Just such great soccer in the American Athletic Conference from top to bottom. Always a battle. Beautiful facility here on the campus of the University of Cincinnati. And back it goes to Les, Les the freshman from Hinkley, Ohio. Whenever Cincinnati's been on the ball, they're really trying to move the ball with pace, trying to get in behind that UCF back line. Cincinnati long searching ball. Too far for the intended target, and that'll go out simply a Knights goal kick. That goal kick's just not good enough. She's got to get it beyond that midfield line or at least to one of her teammates. That could have been a dangerous opportunity there for UCF. Oh, my apologies there. And obviously, Cincinnati in the black as the home team. Visitors in the gray and the white. There, there it is. Now I've got it. I've got and it. Varish, the native of Finland. He was on Finland's 2015 national team there. They're one of the youth products. Yeah, sort of perfect. Well, that's a testament to these college programs getting talent from over in Europe where they have plenty of opportunity to stay there, but instead deciding to come to the States, get an education, and play football at one of these class establishments. Yeah, the Knights, seven different nations represented on their roster, including obviously the U.S., and players from across the globe. We, men we mentioned Orshman, as we see Cincinnati pouring forward right now. Cincinnati pressing, looking for the opener. They'll find itself out, a corner kick coming first set piece of the match. And that's what you want to see from from Cincinnati to really run at that back line. There's the man who heads the Bearcats. Neil Stafford, what a job he has done. His team, they have progressed. They've won more games every single year. Now the fifth year as the head coach of UC. He's an intense coach. Really wants to see a Cincinnati squad 
impose their will on this UCF squad. Barking out instructions, players streaming in from the top of the box for the corner, played to the back post, headed back in, but Varis there able to come up with it. Who's the conference preseason goalkeeper of the year, the Finnish native. You want to you be able to react in real time, in other words? Well, that was a planned set piece. They're trying to shoot that ball into the back post, headed across goal and try to get some sort of deflection or get one of their attacking players on and headed. And let's, let's fortunately for UCF, they're able to deal with it defensively. Now back to her counterpart. Madison Less. Cincinnati played out of the back as they like to do. Good searching ball down the near side. Battling, there's Sosa. Sosa, the Brazilian, the transfer from Louisville. Rule to have come off of Kathleen Sosa. A very nice distribution from the Cincinnati goalkeeper, but equally as nice defending from UCF. So far, they've dealt with everything Cincinnati has done with them. Those who joined the team back in July, the only night to have played every minute thus far on the season. Now Pavlika, the senior from Michigan with the throw. Bouncing around, Cincinnati, no opportunity for the shot. Sent in and Barris there to make it hers. Again, good goalkeeping here. That was a nice little opportunity. Fortunately, Cincinnati couldn't get anything on goal. But this UCF defense can really gain some confidence. They can really deal with the Cincinnati attack. Early in the eighth minute, no score between the Bearcats and the Knights. Now the Knights looking. Ball to the top of the box. Good searching ball just over the head of the intended target, but you love the idea there. Well, when you see such a beautiful ball come into the box like that, you really want to see the ball hit the back of the net with that second touch. Unfortunately, UCF couldn't do that on this one. Tiffany robertson Hadick, fifth-year head coach, like her counterpart. What a career she had as a player. Won a World Cup for the U.S. Women's National Team in 1999, a gold medal in the 96 Olympics. Also, two NCAA titles with the Tar Heels back in 96 and 97. She's the actual, the only Tar Heel alum to beat her head coach in her old program, Anton Dorrance. And they got the huge victory over the Tar Heels earlier this year. As we said, their first win over a top five opponent since 2009. That's a long streak to be broken there. And again, just all kinds of confidence seething from this UCF side. Now the team has really gained much possession. Seems to be about 50-50 so far. And that was a tough challenge in the midfield there. Free kick coming for Cincinnati. You saw the slide and the man in the middle. Do a little lip reading and say, you've got to play with your head and that is simply not going to get it done. Here's another look. Well, she was quite late and an ob clear and obvious foul on that one. No complaints there. Coach Stafford said one of the keys to his team's best starting program history is the fact that everybody bought in. All of his players came in. They were ready to go in the preseason. Do you, kind of the unofficial motto. It's, it's all about them. They said they're not worried about anyone. They're not worried about the opponents. It's about doing what the Bearcats do. And so far, it's paid dividends. Well, that's the mark of a good coach to get their players to buy into their system and really have confidence in his tactics. Important to keep that locker room together. Knights looking for a bit of possession. They started things off on the front foot. They haven't seen the ball very often in the last few minutes. They'll send it back now with Rodriguez. Excuse me, Sosa rather. And you can see Cincinnati is trying to pressure this UCF back line. They're doing a good job of it right now. They're staying very organized. And they're almost won the ball off just there. But UCF doing well to keep possession for now. Also, the Brazilian shows off the nice feet. I mentioned Rodriguez. She was teammates with former Knight Carol Rodriguez at Monroe College before moving on to Louisville. And now with UCF. UCF, that final ball just... Unable to get it through. Now Cincinnati looking to go the other way. And another whistle in favor of the Bearcats. Look to take it quickly, a little too quickly. Well, that's unfortunate because that could have been a good opportunity for Cincinnati. You see the foul there. Just climbs on her back. Again, another clear and obvious foul. Good refereeing. Adam at that time, the team captain committing the foul. Only Knight with two assists on the season. 
He missed both 2014 and 2016 with knee injuries. Good to see her back on the pitch. Both teams early on when they've been in possession have looked to just pour forward and go 100 miles an hour and run at the, each other's back lines. But I like to see them sort of keep possession, play simple balls. All the freshmen from Ontario and able to find a teammate. Both teams need to take their time and sort of let the ball do the work. Bit of space on the top side. Electing to cut it back in. It's Kowalska. Kowalska, another native of Finland. And the foul this time committed by the Bearcats. And a dangerous free kick coming for the Knights. Robert Sahedek, the impressive player. Now equally impressive as a coach. She's had some great teams down there in Orlando. And well, Orlando, the site of this year's College Cup. UCF hoping to be in that final four. Wouldn't have to travel far. On the free kick, but right into the hands of Les, no problem. Well, that's unfortunate for UCF, the first real set piece this game. You really want to see that ball whipped in between the six yard box and the penalty area. Unfortunately, right at the keeper, and it's an easy save. And the freshman, rolling one thing, that stood out to you and I when we were going over the notes talking about this and was all the freshmen especially for Cincinnati it's so impressive to start as a freshman in division one women's soccer really speaks to the quality and coach Stafford said that he goes the success we've had over the last few years we're starting to get starting to get some players of real quality that can come in and play their first year on campus right and the more successful your program is the better your talent uh, coming in is going to be more t more players are going to want to play for you um, so they're really getting players with uh, character. You know, they have a leadership mentality and a winning mentality. It just speaks volume for this program. Foul committed, Browning. You see the fans here at Gettler Stadium enjoying themselves. A beautiful evening. There's been a lot of buzz on this campus about the Bearcats, and rightfully so. Win tonight over the number 14 ranked Knights. That would go a long way. Free kick nicely taken, top of the box. Varis comes out outside the six yard box to take it. Varis not the tallest goalkeeper, but fearless in the air. Clearly, she went up for that ball and really commanded her box and gathered quite comfortably in the end. That's just good goalkeeping right there. Varis puts a big boot to it, sends it into the Bearcats end. That was good from Koskinen to bring the ball down and try to just keep possession. Stafford, a few words for his charges. Saw his assistant, Matt Kozinuk, there as well. Gavin McLeod, the other assistant. McLeod was a former volunteer assistant, now official member of that coaching staff. Great ball down the line. Oh, flag just... Coming up at the last second, just on the final side, or the wrong side, I should say, of that last defender. It's good to play short there from Sosa, try to build up the back, again, establish some possession, really try to break down the Cincinnati defense. Up to Lawrence. That's a great run there. Good ball. And the Knights turn it into something very well defended and knocked out into touch for a UCF throw. First bit of nice build-up play for there from UCF, or really from either team. It was a great run, but again, just good defending from Cincinnati. The Lawrence, who started all three matches this season, 15 matches a year ago before a season-ending injury. And players that have their seasons cut short, always great to see them back out there. Hope they're going to be able to get a full season under their belt. Lawrence swings it in. Good ball, top of the box. Bouncing the volley, but right there for Lee's. Difficult attempt there. No trouble for the freshman goalkeeper. She showed quite good technique there to even get that ball on frame off the half volley. We're going to see it again here. It's a decent strike. Gets a ton of topspin on it. Just not, just not enough pace well, on the back of that. You mentioned in the open, it was Oshman, the 
Horstman, excuse me, the German international, was at the U19s this summer. Actually showed up the night before the first game and plugged right in. Coach said she's a pro, has no ego. Just every time she's out there, knows what she needs to do, and that's what you want in a player, especially one of that caliber. Well, she helped Germany get to the semifinals of that tournament. So, again, just coming in with just tons of experience. Sorry, shot towards the goal, or is it that all? So the throw will keep it with the Knights back and forth through the first 16 minutes. Not as we anticipated this match would shape up to be. The feeling this may be a war of attrition until that first goal is scored, and that may well open the floodgates. Both defenses look pretty solid, though, as we see Cincinnati try to play out. That's pretty nice from them. Let's try to get that ball down as she does with a second effort. This now, is good football from Cincinnati. Knights taking a page out of Cincinnati's book, pressuring high up the field. They win it back. Top of the box. That one bouncing away, and a lucky it didn't end up on the foot of a Knight. UCF seemed to be depending on long balls. Again, the simple pass is usually the easiest, and really just an accumulation of those types of passes are really what break down the fences. The Knights seem to be bypassing the midfield in a lot of these situations that root one ball out of the back. Easy for the Bearcat defenders to read it, easy to send it back the other way. And they're making decent runs, uh, but the midfield just isn't finding the front two. Physicality continues to amp up. Good touch there, short from UCF. Nice cut inside. She's got to continue to take her space there. She had a ton of space in front of her. Run to the top of the box. Space looking for the opportunity for the shot. Closed down by a second defender. And just too little too late. Had the opportunity, but got to take it as quickly as possible. That's a good ball and good control there. Lawrence. Another searching ball to the top of the box. We now go back down to the sidelines to check in with Matt Shoemaker. Yeah, thanks guys. You were just talking about UC playing a lot of long passes upfield. Coach Stafford was pleading with his girls from the UC sideline, possess the ball. That's really been their bread and butter this season, being able to pick teams apart, maintain possession, and wear teams down throughout the course of the 90 minutes. And we haven't really seen that a whole lot from them yet today. It's been a lot of UCF possessing. Thanks, Matt. That's exactly right. Coach Stafford, he was obviously not pleased with that. He wants more possession for his team. Hard to do much with the ball when you don't have it. We used to have has been playing just a high line and really putting tons of pressure on Cincinnati whenever they've had the ball. It's been very tough for Cincinnati just to just to keep any kind of possession at all, much less, much less anything in the creative half. When you see the momentum, the Knights continuing to build, sending numbers further and further up the field. Everyone on the Cincinnati side. Now Cincinnati plays it over the top, but in a difficult situation, one on three, lucky to come up with it. She's got to get some help from midfield here. You see that huge gulf between the forwards up front and the midfield. Knocked away. It will stay in play for the time being, and now finally trickles out over the inline. Cincinnati has won a corner kick. We'll see if the Bearcats can find the opener via set piece. They seem to have a plan on every single one of their corners. Well, I think this is this is, a, this is their only second corner. But they have a plan on their corners. They're trying to... Six at the top of the box, clad in black. And Knight goes falling to the bench. And he saw that side. Morgan Ferreira comes up, her hands up. Girl's not afraid to get physical here. Herrera right in the middle. Bounces right back up, and our referee is going to come out and have another word. 
mentioned the intensity of these conference games. Getting things started earlier, early in the first half of the season opener. For anyone that doesn't know anything about women's soccer at this level, these girls are tough and they're not afraid to be physical. That is an understatement. Good ball played in. Got ahead to it, but not on frame. Free kick will be to Varys and the Knights. Again, very physical play from both teams so far. Shows a really means to, to each team to get the W here. Again, UCF trying to extend that win streak in Cincinnati, trying to get the W here at home in front of their fans. Likes to take it short, Sosa. Up the pitch, Cincinnati trying to win it back in the Knights in. Nice so, high press so far from Cincinnati. That was very nice. Forces a long ball from US, UCF. So, so, so impressive. 5'10", the senior originally from Brazil. Great touch, as you might expect. And now a corner coming the other way. We'll see. May just be a goal kick. And indeed it will. Simply a goal kick for the Bearcats. Well, that's just incredible defending from the Cincinnati left back. Beautiful slide tackle. That wins the goal kick. Yeah, Sosa, the native of Salve Vicente, Brazil, former Louisville Cardinal, and she has been a standout early in this one defensively. And you see her in the mold of those new defensive players. She'll push up the wing, get the offense started herself. Well, you see the most successful teams in world football like to get the ball out wide and have those overlapping outside backs. She may be uh, watching Marcelo and Danny Alves do that, taking a few tips there from her countrymen. Two of the best in the world. Here to the near side. Knights looking dangerous. Very well defended. Fantastic work there from Cincinnati. Kiki Lau, just an incredible left back for Cincinnati. She's been attacked on more than one occasion this game, and she's dealt with it with ease. And Lau, the freshman from Kitchener, Ontario. Another very tall defender. Goes 5'9", moves so well. Well, she's great on the ball, and she's very technical. So feels confident with whenever she wins a tackle with distributing the ball from the back. Browning with the throw. The freshman from right here in Cincinnati. Another ball over the top, easily headed away by the Knights defense. Just over halfway through the first 45 minutes. Still no score in this conference opener. That's a good ball. Flag stays down into the top of the hole, top of the six yard box opportunity there, but the shot not coming in time and leaves there to clean it up. Less good work from the freshman goalkeeper. Well, that was beautiful build up play from UCF and a brilliant cross into the middle of the box. Unfortunately, they can't get a shot on goal. As you see here, just a wonderful cross into the middle. It's kind of at an awkward height and sort of hits the UCF attacker in the stomach. Hard to deal with a ball like that. Yeah, it took it first touch, looking for Kowalska, and Kowalska unable to settle it before the defender came in. Well, that's there to clean it up. Very entertaining in this one, end to end action. Now Cincinnati is searching ball to the top of the box, able to retain possession. Good physical play in the midfield there to, be, to uh, gain back possession from Cincinnati. That one coming off a of Bearcat. Last to touch it. And simply a goal kick coming. Came off the foot of Vettery. Sorry, the junior from Ohio. Mason, Ohio native. You see the strategy here for Cincinnati is just a poor pressure on UCF whenever they have possession in their defense, and they're doing a good job of it so far. Shot deflected. The shot, oh, not on frame. The opportunity, the goalkeeper off the line. Varys caught right there at the top of the six-yard box, and you see Fatari, the expression she knew. The opportunity for the opener was there. Well, Cincinnati had a couple different options going forward on that last attack. But unfortunately for them, they can't finish. 
the UCF back line, sixes and sevens. Again, only kept one clean sheet so far this season. And you kind of see why there. A lot of local talent for the Bearcats, a lot of Ohio products electing to stay home and play for Coach Stafford. This program continues to get better each and every year. And we're really seeing a rise in soccer culture there in Cincinnati with uh, the, the rise in popularity of FC Cincinnati in the USL. Oh, what kind of fans do they have? That is a franchise. They're fun to watch, great fan support. And the Bearcats looking to build on that is there's a substitution. Charlie Grunbaum, another freshman defender comes on. Grunbaum wearing number 32. A substitution the other way as well. Morgan Ferreira coming off for the Knights. Rowan, you mentioned it, those balls over the top. If they find the target, they look perfect. That's just how you drew them up. But so far, that has not been the case. And maybe a little more success trying to play balls to feet. Cincinnati has been nice and composed in the back so far. UCF has had a couple opportunities. But again, Cincinnati deal with the pressure. And again, you just want to see them keep possession, although that is a very nice ball. And the flag came up there at the very end. I don't know if it was for offside or possibly an inadvertent handball. A beautifully placed ball right there. Vitari found her, but unfortunately, it'll be a free kick. Unfortunately for Cincinnati, I should say, the free kick now for the Knights. Sosa's pass picked off, headed away. Things settling down just a bit. That's a nice little turn there in midfield to take her space and find a simple ball. That's a very good ball. Oh, great look there. No, just too far. Couldn't settle it. The Knights able to come up with it. Cincinnati unable to clear it out of danger. Now the Knights really starting to knock it around, building on that confidence. Well, they're having some nice movement off the ball. She's presenting them with easier options in the midfield there. Headed away, another searching ball. UCF still with possession, everyone moving up. Final defenders close to that midfield stripe. The Knights, they've had possession for the last 90 seconds, and now finally giving it away Lowell great defending wins it back again Lowell just cleaning up back there staying composed putting in nice challenges and winning the ball every single time so far again that's a freshman anytime that the ball has come down this near side the freshman Kiki Lowell has been able to stick a tackle and win it back for the Bearcats less off her line and there to take it at the top of the box A player down on the pitch is Cassie Weldon. Weldon, the junior from Waterloo, Ontario, another Canadian down as the training staff for the Bearcats comes out to attend to her. Players will take the opportunity to get a drink, catch their breath. No score. Just half an hour into the 2017 American Athletic Conference opener between Cincinnati and UCF. Rowan, what have you seen so far from these two sides? Well, they've been fairly solid defensively. But you can see the talent that they have individually. I would just like each of them, whenever they get on the ball, to keep possession, have some more patience going forward, and look to really unlock the defense by letting the ball do the work and not necessarily going root run every single time. But I can sort of identify with them. You know, being a former player, you want to get there and you want to put the ball in the back of the net as quickly as possible. But uh, sometimes, the, the, you know, the game calls for patience and you just need to keep the ball and uh, opportunities will present themselves to you. 
Players back on the pitch. Well then off being attended to by the training staff. And it seems that the Knights have had their most success when they played quickly. They played that one or two touch ball. They've been able to find space, play the ball into space and use their speed. Well, they have had uh, some nice opportunities of or some nice spells of possession, that is. Uh, but again, they sort of lose patience and look for the long ball over the top. And Cincinnati's actually done a very good job at dealing with that. Um, I think UCF has only had one clear cut opportunity, maybe one half chance that fell to Orschman to get from that half volley. Uh, but again, Cincinnati solid in defense. Uh, UCF just a bit more patient in possession. Morgan Ferreira on the sideline looking to come back in for the Knights. He would have tight rope the near sideline as we go down to the sideline to check in with Matt Shoemaker. Thanks, guys. Just a quick update on the player that just went off. That was number three, Cassie Weldon, getting the start tonight. Not typically a starter, perhaps some fatigued legs. It's really hot down here. It was 90 degrees at the start of kickoff. Just a cramp for her, though. They're giving her plenty of fluids, stretching her out. I imagine she'll be back in this game at some point. Thanks, Matt. Good news there that Weldon will be back. And you mentioned the heat and the humidity, certainly a factor. And it's still, it's, it's early in the season for both of these teams. They had long preseasons. They played matches. But when you're in a conference opener, the intensity, the speed, everything is amplified. Everything is ramped up. See how that plays into this match as we start to get into the later minutes of the second half. Again, as we said before, another team really shying away from tackles here. Playing very aggressive football, showing how much this conference matchup meets to them. Very physical. That back line bowing its neck yet again for the Bearcats. Giving away the Knights looking for something. It seems like the Knights are able to get all the way up to that back line, and then that final line of defenders for the Bearcats wins it back. D. Piku for Cincinnati winning ball, winning the ball back in that midfield. Has a nice touch and a nice turn and draws a foul. That's good defending there. But again, it is just that final ball that seems to be missing for UCF. Sosa watches it into touch. Throw coming for Cincinnati. Maybe an opportunity here from the set piece is Piku, the sophomore from Needham Mass. The long throw. And out for the goal kick. Paris sending her troops forward. Short and not the goal kick she was looking for, but still with the Knights. See Lowell again sticking a tackle. Things becoming a little bit more disjointed in the last five minutes for both teams. UCF had the best spell of possession so far in this game. Maybe seems Cincinnati are pouring forward a little bit more now. Cincinnati, the offense has come in spurts. It has not been consistent. They've looked dangerous, and here's another opportunity. Two defenders, that one stays in play, finally knocked out. You see the frustration there on the face of Atari and some of the players up front for Cincinnati. They haven't seen a lot of the ball, and when they have, they just haven't had the opportunities they're used to. When you get the ball in the 18-yard box, you want to at least try to rip a shot on goal. Cincinnati in that last spell, not able to do that. Plenty of time as a player, or especially as a forward, you don't get the opportunity to get a shot off. You're disappointed. Bearcats, a bit of possession. I haven't seen a lot of the ball in the last few minutes. And just as I say that, here comes UCF the other way. Opportunity to move in the counter. That door closed quickly by the Cincinnati midfield. Good ball over the top, searching ball. The shot finds itself into the side netting, but another one of those long balls switching play 
from the bottom up to the top of the field. That one was perfectly played up to Kowalska. Well, it was a decent first touch off her chest, as we're going to see it here. Decent first, first touch off her chest, but that's good defending from Cincinnati to take her wide. That's Greenbaum there, Riley Greenbaum. Great defending from her to just take her wide and not get, let her get a clean shot on goal. All the way back to Les. Now on to Lowell. Lowell head up. Alexis send the long ball and easily headed away by Sosa. Well, Lowell is so technically gifted. I like to see her in more in offense for Cincinnati. She's been great defending from that left, po left back position. Excuse me. I like to see her get forward like she's doing now. Maybe get some overlapping runs in. Nice run here on the near side looking for that diagonal ball. Well defended by UCF. Both these defenses, we heard a lot about them coming into this match, and so far they have definitely stood up. When well, UCF just swarming to the ball defensively in that last bit of that last bit of possession for Cincinnati. Finally just cleared out into touch. The Knights will have a throw, but rolling again, and a long ball over the top. The teams have the buildup. They're able to get it through that center third, but it seems for whatever reason they want to play the final ball over the top. Easier for the defenders to get to it and knock it out. Bit of rush of blood to the head. They see a, an opportunity across the field. They want to get the ball there as quickly as possible. But sometimes a, a nice combination of three, four, or five passes to get the ball there is really what's needed. Short throw flicked into the box. Cincinnati looking to clear it away. Never shy about playing out of the back are the Bearcats. Goes on to Lawrence. And up the sideline, Lowell again, shoulder to shoulder, wins it back. What a tackle from the freshman, Kiki Lowell. So far, she's been the most impressive player on the pitch for me. Absolutely outstanding. Here's another look, and that was shoulder to shoulder. That is exactly how the coach tells you to do it. Well, just a bigger, stronger player comes up victorious. Physical player there, but nothing illegal about it. Less than 10 minutes remaining in the first half, still looking for the opener in our 2017 American Athletic Conference opener. A nice run, nice ball slotted through. Looking to serve it into the box, cuts it back and knocked away. Great defending as the Bearcats go down to the field, but able to keep the dangerous ball out of the box for the time being. Lawrence, another, I don't know if you would call that optimistic or I think that's probably the word for it, but did not find a teammate. Well, these kinds of long balls are really for, you know, the last five minutes of a game when you're losing, maybe the last 10 minutes. I'll see if I can not in the that. first half of so, a nil-nil scoreline. A great point, Sosa back to Varis. Varis switches field. All right, I think I just turned the auto gain off. Great tackle. A wonderfully done, able to pickpocket the Knight there and takes it back. We've seen some great tackling from both of these teams. Neither shy about going into a tackle. That aspect of the game has been a real pleasure to watch, especially with the refereeing, sort of letting play go. It's been physical, but not malicious. The referee really doing a good job at letting this game sort of ebb and flow naturally. Uh, sometimes a referee, especially early in the match, will see a, a hard tackle, and even if it is completely by the book, just sees it, or maybe because of the reaction from the fans or the coaches will blow the whistle. Referees done a very good job tonight letting play continue. We've had, a, as you said, a lot of give and take, a lot of back and forth from both these teams, making it very entertaining in the first half. And preferably as a fan, you don't want to really see the referee at all, so he's done a good job at remaining obscure. The referee will tell you, if you're not mentioning, him, mentioning the referee at the end of the match, he or she has done their job. Sosa. The whistle blows. 
really for only like the second time this game so far to our point. Free kick for the Knights just on their side of the midfield stripe. Like to take it quickly. That has certainly stood out to me. The physical play here in the first half as Lawrence up to take the throw. Ball, great job putting her leg around the night forward as she knocks it into touch. Again, positioning has been impeccable. And just every single one of her challenges have been clean. Very impressive from Lowell tonight. Lawrence, the long throw into the box. Bouncing around, dangerous. Still with UCF looking for the opportunity to pull the trigger and finally knocked away by Cincinnati. Well, you love the heart from the Cincinnati defenders putting their ball, putting their bodies on the line to deflect that shot from the from UCF. You see the heart the Cincinnati team has. Cincinnati, as you mentioned, a gritty team, and we've seen that certainly from their back line. Barris up the other way and headed back. Back and forth we go. Will we find an opener in the first 45 or will we go in to the locker room stranded at nil-nil? Either team has had a lot of chances, but it only takes one good opportunity, one bounce of the ball. And this could be it right here. Oh, beautifully done. Cincinnati at a last second tackle able to win it. They've done a great job at just closing down in the last second and winning the ball in the last possible opportunity. UCF just not really pulling the trigger. You can't wait for the perfect opportunity. You just got to wait for, you know, just an inch of a window. Cutting back in the shot ball on the turf and finally knocked away. Great save from Les. I think they heard me. I think they did. Wonderful defending there from Les and Piku coming in there as well. The sophomore defender finally clears it up. Well, that wasn't from the perfect angle, the most perfect of angles. But again, just taking the chance, trying to get the ball on frame. Here we go again, just right from the top of the six. Great save. Tries to put it across to the far post. But again, just good goalkeeping. And now a corner coming for the Knights. Gary Lawrence will come over to take it. Very impressive award-filled high school career. Dealt with some injuries here in the collegiate ranks. Since the high floater up and that one out of the box, not where she intended. Again, just another missed opportunity from UCF. You want to see that ball really whipped in between the six-yard box and the penalty area. And rolling in a game like this, as tightly contested as it is, with as few opportunities as we've seen in the first half, you have to take advantage of every single set piece. Every single attacking, attacking opportunity is coming at a premium. As there haven't really been, like you said, a, a many very clear-cut chances. Back to Lawrence. Callahan sends it to the outside. Ferreira. Very good ball. Good ball inside. Still danger looming. Looking for a teammate. And Les there to push it away around the post. The freshman goalkeeper comes up big yet again. That was a wonderful through ball into Orschman. Unfortunately, her first touch takes her away from goal. She kind of gets stuck in that six-yard box and can't really find a teammate, if we're going to see it here. She ends up finding Christine Creighton, who tries to get a shot on goal. She does so, eventually wins a corner. Corner finds a head, and UCF able to retain it. Knights looking to swing it back into the box. Got a touch, but no one in the vicinity. And finally cleared away. So another squandered opportunity there from UCF. Two opportunities, one from the near, one from the far. But both passes just off the mark. 
UCF, as you said, had two opportunities with the ball around that six yard box right in front of the goal mouth. And both opportunities were saved. So quite unfortunate from UCF, but good goalkeeping from Cincinnati. And Cincinnati find the go ahead goal with just 90 seconds remaining in the first half. Their chances have been few and far between. UCF has certainly seen more of the ball. They've had more opportunities, but neither team able to capitalize. Well, Creighton was making a nice run down that left-hand side, but Tacker not able to find her, unfortunately. To the top of the box it goes. Now, you mentioned that run. She was all by herself, but a teammate unable to slot the pass through to her. To the top of the six-yard box. UCF working hard, looking for the opener. Shot from distance, just off the mark. I like to see more of that. They've had the ball, you know, about 20, 25 yards out uh, with not a Cincinnati defender in front of them. So I like the ambition here. That's a great, that's not a bad ball. That's not a bad shot. It's not on frame. But I like the idea. And I like Creighton's movement off the ball as well. Number two for UCF. She's put herself in some dangerous, some dangerous positions. Just a few seconds remaining in the first half. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. That's now time for Gettler Stadium. And that will do it. First half in the books. No score in the 2017 American Athletic Conference opener between Cincinnati and UCF as we now go down to the sidelines. Our own Matt Schumacher with Neil Stafford, head coach of the Bearcats. Coach is uh, going to have a few words for some of his players, as you might imagine, before he's going to talk to Matt. And uh, Matt waiting patiently by. But like all good coach, Coach Stafford wants to uh, make sure he gets his point across before they go in. Cincinnati, you know, they've been, you know, they've had a couple of opportunities given away to UCF, but at the end of the day, pretty resolute in defense. Again, just putting their balls, in, their bodies on the line to deflect the balls out of the goal mouth. Yeah, it's been great defending from both of these teams. It's been very impressive in the conference opener. We'll take a break. We'll come back here to Gettler Stadium in Cincinnati. No score at the half between the Bearcats and the Knights in the 2017 American Athletic Conference opener. People say we're big. Well, what is big? This is big. It's an energy. An opportunity. So go on. Dream big. Because big is just the beginning. I got it. <laughs> this is big. For every hero, there is an origin story. An experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is college. Offering a different kind of education. One guided by distinguished professors who understand experience as the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. Welcome you back to beautiful Gettler Stadium on the campus of the University hey, of Cincinnati. Welcome back out to Cincinnati down on the field with head coach Neil Stafford. To start things and off. And while the game, it was very intense. No score between Cincinnati and the visiting UCF team. As we know, go down to the sideline to check in with Matt Shoemaker. Thanks, guys. Coach, quickly, it's been a back-and-forth battle in the first half. Towards the end, UCF started to possess a little bit more. What do you have to do in the second half to kind of turn things around and get a goal on your favor? We got up the tempo a little bit. We got to keep possession. I mean, not keeping possession against a team like UCF, it kills you. And uh, you can see that we're on the back foot, and certainly we just need to get a hold of the ball more. <clears throat> and we need to be a bit more creative in what we're doing. 
I think our movement off the ball right now is a little weak, uh, and we've just got to sort of get the momentum back. Coach, thank you, and good luck in the second half. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Matt. Well, you heard him, fifth-year head coach Neil Stafford, and Roland echoing things that you comments you'd made in the first half. Right, yeah. Well, of course, you know, any coach is going to want to have possession of the ball. But again, yeah, they're moving off the ball. White hasn't been there. Uh, I think UCF has done a better job at that. Uh, but again, both teams just be a, need to be a little bit more patient. You've seen very good defending from Kiki Lowes. We just saw that last highlight. They did have sort of a half chance here and there, Cincinnati did. But again, they showed a lot of heart and defense. That's not the weak point. The weak point is you know, staying patient in the midfield, keeping possession, playing simple balls. And again, just letting the ball do the work and letting uh, opportunities open themselves up to them. We'll have a second half when we return to Cincinnati. No score in the 2017 American Athletic Conference opener between the Bearcats and the Knights. 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Thanks for tuning in to our Wednesday edition of The Rise featuring our top Olympic sports headlines from around the conference. Let's take a look at last week's action starting off with women's soccer. East Carolina took home three American Weekly Awards after an undefeated week. It marks the first time in program history that the Pirates have had more than two weekly award winners. American Goalkeeper of the Week, Michelle Newhouse, made a career-high eight saves in a one-to-one -one draw against number five Virginia last Sunday and became the first player this season to win multiple Goalkeeper of the Week honors across the American. A couple of other teams that will be looking for a victory on Thursday night to kick off conference play are UCF and Cincinnati. Women's soccer kicks off the American Digital Network fall coverage with the Bearcats hosting the Knights at Gettler Stadium Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. It should be an exciting matchup as these teams have a combined 10 wins between the two of them. The 14th ranked Knights had three games called off due to Hurricane Irma and look forward to returning to the pitch on Thursday. Their last matchup took place the weekend of September 3rd when they won the Sun Devil Desert Classic hosted by Arizona State. The Bearcats, meanwhile, are number 25 in the latest top drawer soccer rankings. They are 6-1, including an undefeated record at home. Over on the men's side, Cincinnati made waves across the soccer scene when they defeated two top 25 opponents on the road, Kentucky and Bowling Green, who were number 13 and 19 in the polls, respectively. The Bearcats won three American Weekly Awards for their efforts and even got a shout-out on Twitter from Cincinnati men's basketball coach Mick Cronin. That's always nice. Rookie midfielder Sean Clark propelled the Bearcats offense last week and scored the game-winning goal in the win over Kentucky. He later scored three points, one goal, and one assist in the win over Bowling Green on Saturday. SMU entered the national rankings this week and came in at number 19 in the United Soccer Coaches Top 25. Sophomore forward Garrett McLaughlin, who earned a spot on the Americans' honor roll, was named Top Drawer Soccer's Men's Player of the Week. He scored game-winning goals in matches for the Mustangs last week, a 4-0 win over Loyola, Maryland, and a 1-0 win over Brown. UConn forward Abdu Baki Jam scored the most points of anyone last week with six, including back-to-back -back goals against North Florida on Saturday, grabbing the attention of the NCAA Twitter account. Meanwhile, with conference play starting up this week, SMU travels to Tulsa on Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern in a game that will air live on the American Digital Network. Fans can catch all of the action for free on YouTube. In volleyball, Wichita State continues to send shockwaves across the American with their great start. They jumped back into the national rankings this week and entered the AVCA poll at number 24. It's the second ranking for the Shockers this season. Wichita State played stiff competition last week and defeated number 8 Creighton in four sets before dropping a decision to number 19 Iowa State. Rookie libero Georgia Savita was named the Americans' Defensive Player of the Week, while senior outside hitter Michaela Rodsep earned a spot on the honor roll. Memphis enjoyed a 3-0 weekend in its home opening tournament, and two players, Natalie Zanilato and Brianna Kadiku, landed on the Americans' honor roll this week. 
Tulane is riding a six-match win streak and went 3-0 at home, with right side hitter Kristen Thompson being named MVP of the Tulane Invitational. The Green Wave earned its second consecutive tournament title over the weekend and continues to lead the conference standings with an 11-2 mark. The American Digital Network begins volleyball coverage on Friday with Temple hosting Wichita State at McConaughey Hall. The Owls are 1, 2, and 3 in the conference in individual blocks per game and ranked top 10 in the NCAA in the same category as a team. Over in cross country, the American continued its winning ways and brought home multiple first place finishes across the board individually and on the team side. The conference combined for seven first place finishes over the weekend, including Temple, who won its second consecutive meet. Congratulations to graduate student Mark Steinsberger for winning the individual title at the Ryder Invite for the second year in a row. UConn's women's team won their second consecutive meet when they took first at the UB Stampede Invitational. Tulane, who ranks 10th in the South Central region, won the LSU Invitational thanks to a first place finish from Emma Newton. When I came into this classroom, we had 30 desks, 30 chairs, a teacher's desk. That was it. Donors Choose is the greatest, simplest idea. Teachers put up materials they need. You, as a donor, choose a school. And you can fund part of a project or the entire project. It is magic. With Donors Choose, you know exactly where it goes, every dime. They feel like somebody in this country cares about me and my potential, and that's a powerful thing. Cincinnati women's soccer is off to the best start in program history in 2017. The Bearcats are currently 20th in the RPI rankings, and head coach Neil Stafford picked up the 150th win of his career in a thrilling 2-1 victory against Purdue. Well, I think right off the bat, the way that we came into preseason with our fitness was uh, probably different from previous seasons. Um, I thought what we did in the spring semester really sort of benefited the players and their preparations over the summertime, and so our fitness has played a huge part of why we've been successful and I think uh, as we're in year season five now I think technically we're getting a little bit better tactically we're getting a little bit better and so I think all of those things combining has helped us really uh, get off to a good start. So I think this year is really different from past years because we all came in really bought in individually we all came in really in shape and ready to go and I think that helped us starting off the season really well and I think from there we just built upon it and our team chemistry is really good so I think that helps us a lot. After a great start to the season, the Bearcats are ready to turn their attention to conference play as they take on UCF here on Thursday. Well, I think conference play is a whole lot different from non-conference play, and um, the intensity, uh, the rewards, everything is sort of, uh, it's up the ante, and you know, for us now, it's about being as sharp as we can be, um, being ready to go. Uh, it's probably a bit more physical. I think the freshmen are going to have to get used to sort of the difference between conference and non-conference, but... Um, you know, I think right now we have all the respect in the world for UCF, um, but I mean, we're really focusing on us and, and doing what we do well, and if we can do that, I think we'll be successful. I think we're kind of focusing on just doing us, as we say. We have a quote that we say, you do, like, do you, so I think that's really important for us. I think individually, if we all come out and do what we all do best, then I think as a team, we'll do really well and we'll be really successful against them. Well, execution always plays a big part. You know, we grind these teams down, but at the end of the day, you got to put a ball, ball in the back of the net. And uh, if we can do that, then I think we'll be successful. And then um, just staying true to ourselves in regards to like what our DNA is and uh, what our what what we do well um, when we press, um, you know, being physical and um, just wearing teams down. With UC Campus Connect, I'm Taylor D'Ambrosia. People say we're big. Well. What is big? This is big. It's an energy. An opportunity. This is big, baby! So go on. Dream big. Because big is just the beginning. I got it. <laughs> The 
UCF women's soccer team has not only some of the best players in the country, but in the world. Two key players spent their summer playing overseas, including Berlin native Dino Orschman. I'm very proud too to be uh, playing in the national team. While Orschman only arrived at UCF one week before the game against UNC, she said that adjusting has been rather smooth. I've learned a lot of things. Um, it's very hard to combine the soccer training with all the study stuff, but I do it very well so far, so I hope it uh, be also in the future. While Orschman says she enjoys playing for Germany and UCF, she said there are a few differences that set them apart. The technical skills and um, yeah, technique, uh, techniques, um, there's a lot of things that are different, I think, but in the whole, I think the team is, the team spirit here is more powerful. Even though Orschman is coming in as a freshman for the team, Coach Sahedak said she's already making such a big impact. You know, Dina is brand new to our team. She's a freshman. Um, she's definitely going to be, you know, a player to watch out for. Um, she has international experience with the German uh, youth national team, so... Um, she's, she's very technical and very composed, and she's a goal scorer. Also making a big splash on the women's soccer team is midfielder Zandi Saray. Um, I've played internationally a lot with the Belgian team in the youth, like U17 and U19, but I've also been to camps with the full team, so those have been really great experiences, and it's really helped develop me and give me like other opportunities that have really progressed my play. While Saray is shining all over the world, she said it definitely doesn't always come easy. It's tough because I'm playing with players that I don't really know a lot and I come in and I have to like work hard to get in and to get accustomed to the play. So it's just a lot of grit and like really working hard. Reporting for Campus Connect from UCF, I'm Brianna Sorensen. For every hero, there is an origin story. An experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling. Offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. We welcome you back to Cincinnati, Gettler Stadium on the campus of the University of Cincinnati. No scored half between the Bearcats and the visiting UCF Knights in the opening American Athletic Conference game of the season. Alongside Roland Garenzoy, I'm Kit McConico. Roland, your thoughts on the first 45 minutes? Well, pretty active uh, 40, first 45, uh, very defensively sound uh, from UCF, uh, especially toward in the last maybe you know, 20, 25 minutes. They were pretty solid. Cincinnati, again, uh, sort of bend but not break mentality for them in the last half hour or so. Um, not a whole lot creative, creatively going forward for Cincinnati, so them being the home team, I'd imagine it's going to change in the second half. Second half for UCF, I think, uh, just more of the same, slightly, again, more patient uh, in possession for them. Uh, their movement off the ball has been pretty great, so I like them to, to sort of connect with their teammates and uh, make, again, just the simple passes and, and let the ball do the work. Or alone, Matt Shoemaker, was, he got the opportunity to speak with Neil Stafford, head coach of Cincinnati. If your coach, Sahedek of UCF, are you, are you telling your lady, just keep doing what you're doing, continue to play, and maybe maybe that final ball, keep it on the ground, it's supposed to play over the top, and that opener is going to come? That is 100% what I would tell UCF. Just chill out for two seconds, make the simple pass. You know, they're moving off the ball. Again, it's, it's been pretty good, I'd say. There's been a few runs in there that I feel like they haven't found. Um, so take just another second, pick your head up, and, 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 and again, just play, play the ball to your teammates closest to you. For Cincinnati, I think, uh, you know, you heard Coach Stafford sort of complain about the lack of possession. I think the same thing needs to be said when they win the ball back in the midfield, which they've done many times. They've been pretty tough uh, in the midfield and winning the ball back uh, on more than one occasion. Again, just the same thing. Just sort of stay patient, pick your head up, and find your teammates. And again, the chances will come. The talent is there for both of these squads. Eighth all-time meeting between these two. Each team has three wins in the series. UCF number 14 in the country. They are perfect, as we mentioned in the pregame. 4-0 and an American Athletic Conference opener is looking to go 5-0. and Cincinnati, well, they are looking to improve on their best starting program history and looking to make it three in a row over the Knights. Back to the action we go. The Knights will be going from right to left in the visiting gray and white. The home Bearcats in the black.
Sun has set, temperatures cooling off very nicely. It was hot and humid to start things off. Let's see if that plays a factor in the latter minutes of this one. Waiting for the referee signal to get things started in the second half. And there we go, underway between the Bearcats and the Knights, second half. Rowan, you would assume that UCF, as they had the majority of the possession, they had more chances in the first half. We'll look to continue to press, build on that momentum, try to get some shots. They had some shots at the end of the first half, but very good goalkeeping from the freshman Madison Less kept it scoreless. And for Cincinnati, maybe a handful of chances at best. Well, part of that reason is because UCF has been keeping a very high line. They've been putting tons of pressure on Cincinnati, both in the midfield and back in the defense. Haven't really given an opportunity to sort of play the ball to feet from that back line as much as they would like to. So they've done a great job at, again, just providing that pressure and able to win the ball back into the midfield. Ferris. The goalkeeper from Finland elects to play its short preseason conference goalkeeper of the year. Had an outstanding season a year ago, looking to build on it. Strength to both of these two teams in the back, the goalkeepers, that back line. My respect from the score line. We've, we've seen them stand up so far in this one. And I know it's only been about a minute and a half, but you haven't seen a long ball yet. So both teams hopefully we're told in the locker room to keep the ball on the ground, and as I say that... <laughs> Broadcaster's curse. Of course. But I really do think that was the message in, 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 at halftime, to sort of keep the ball on the ground. We really, really try to wear the opposing team down. Now we mentioned UCF, and that they had the opportunities, or had more opportunities, I should say, but Cincinnati looked very good. They had chances in the counter, but they elected to play that final ball over the top. It was read out and knocked away a lot of times by those night defenders. But these, both these teams looked most dangerous when they played the ball to feet. Into the box and knocked away. That was a nice little dink ball into the danger area. It's a good idea there. Cincinnati looking for the opportunity and the night defense closing quickly. In it goes, no trouble for Varis. That wasn't a bad ball in, just couldn't quite get her foot around the ball to get that ball to, to curl. And instead, it just went straight to the goalkeeper and she handles nicely. Ferris brings it up out of the box. Now sends it up the field. Cincinnati able to come up with it. Here to the near side, all kinds of space for the Bearcats. Played down the line, beautiful ball. Knocked away. Again, the defense is coming up, bowing their necks. That time, well, who else? Kathleen Sosa. Kathleen Sosa, the Brazilian, the transfer from Louisville, so impressive in the first half. As was her counterpart, the freshman Kiki Lowell. Looks like we're going to see a long throw in here. Long throw indeed, nicely placed there at the edge of the six yard box. Stays in play momentarily, and out it goes. Goal kick. Sometimes those. Uh, those throw-ins can be pretty effective. The fly of the ball is a little bit different than if you were kicking it. So it's sort of confusing to those defenders. It'd be a weapon that we could see utilized again later on in this match. Both teams would hazard to say that their best opportunities came from set pieces. Long throw, not quite a set piece, but not far off. It can be used as a set piece. You know, you can game plan it uh, when you're in training during the week, especially if you see that an opposing team's back line is, uh, you know, staturely challenged, could we, should we say? <laughs> a little bit short, a little bit shorter than usual. That's a lot easier to say. That's not the case in this one. You've got Sosa at 5'10", and then you've got Lowell at 5'9". There's, there's some height on both of these back lines. But yeah, that, that is a weapon that can be utilized. And again, it's a little bit awkward, the flat of the ball. It's a little different than you're used to seeing. Cincinnati able to settle it, an opportunity, but couldn't get it down the line in time. Now the other way, all kinds of space for the Knights. Again, make the simple pass. Searching ball too far, and that time just 
as you said, both of these teams, they want that opening goal. You can feel the intensity, and you can feel the pressure. Of course, especially for this UCF side, again, coming off a four-game win streak, they have a lot of confidence, but again, just, just that patience for that final ball. Sorry. That was a simple ball that could have been played down the right-hand side. They elect to try to get the ball in behind that Cincinnati defense. The UCF winners of their last four, they lost the opener to then number four ranked South Carolina 2-0. Then they came back, they got that huge victory over the number four ranked Tar Heels. Went to double overtime, ultimately came away with a 2-1 victory there in the 105th minute that goal scored. And then back-to-back 2-1 wins over RV Arizona and Arizona State out there in the Sun Devil Classic. And that UNC win is nothing to scoff at. They have a story tradition of high-level soccer being played at that school on both the men's and women's side. And Sandora Torrance, one of the best, if not the best, in all of women's college soccer history. And for Cincinnati, well, they were a perfect 6-0. and oh. They had that one draw with Pittsburgh. Then their last time out falling to LSU, one to nothing, but still the best start in the program's history. Again, that's good pressure on, from Lowell from Cincinnati on Creighton. She didn't win the throw. But she put out that little fire there as she pushed forward. At Creighton, she was the one who netted that game winner against North Carolina. Got player of the week honors earlier this year. From what I can see from her moving off the ball, she's a very smart player. Does a great job at finding space. Big collision. Referee says play on. Very well organized is the Cincinnati defense. Opportunity here at the top. Looking for the shot from distance. Able to get around one defender. Tried to go around one too many. And that's got to be a shot in her second touch there from Madison Mernon. Unfortunate. Another sort of half chance goes by the wayside. And Mernon, her first collegiate goal earlier this year. Game winner against Arizona. That's something she'll learn as her collegiate career progresses. They're a lot bigger and faster in college than they were in high school. When you've got the chance, you have to take it. Absolutely. It's a big step up. Shot from distance, takes a bounce, and no trouble for Les. That's a nice shot from Adamek there. Again, she had tons of space in front of her. She sees an opportunity. She takes it, doesn't quite catch it the way she'd like to. It goes straight at the goalkeeper. But again, you don't score unless you shoot. So they have to pepper that Cincinnati goal if they're going to look to go up 1-0 here. Adamek, the team captain, who's all-rookie team back in 2013 in the American Athletic Conference. Rolling a lot of times, coaches not happy with their shots from distance, but when you have any as few opportunities, why not take that chance? And maybe the goalie, maybe goalie bobbles it, plays it in front, you get an easy tap in. Absolutely. If you don't shoot, you can't score. Just keep taking those those half quarter and quarter chances, you know. Again, chances are coming at a premium. You're not gonna get the perfect opportunity every single time. Sometimes you just gotta pull the trigger. Cincinnati looking to take the throw quickly, but well defended there, dropping back. No advantage. Knights defense doing a good job getting into position. That one just given away. Again, UCF picking up where they left off in the first half. Keeping tons of possession here early on in the, in the second half. Takes a deflection, finds itself with the Knights. Now the ball ping-ponging around. Good tackle there, the Bearcats. Oh, great move here on the near side. Able to pull it back, looking for a teammate. Very nicely done. I believe that was Cutler, the junior from Copley, Ohio. It's a nice little bit of skill there. Unfortunately, it comes to nothing, but you see the actual technical ability and talent level of both these teams. Again, taken short. Great note, able to come up with it. Cincinnati finds themselves with possession. 
a long ball over the top and just not a Bearcat in the vicinity. It's good pressure here. A great tackle and there's flag raise. Got a bit of the night as you uh, turn your head. Maybe not so happy with that call. It looked, it looked clean from our vantage point. Yeah, not sure about that call there. She seemed to, she, she seemed to keep possession well. And it looked like good defending from here. Knights will have a free kick 10 minutes into the second half. Still looking for the opener in this American Athletic Conference opener. Cincinnati hosting both the Florida schools, UCF and USF. They will take on the Bulls on Sunday, but not worried about that right now. Just want the victory. Knights will head to East Carolina on Sunday. Their second match in the conference season. Looking to play quickly, all kinds of space. Oh, great move around the defender. Down the line, but Lowell easily comes up with it. It's a good bit of depending from Lowell. Defending from inside out. She's in perfect position to make that interception. And Lowell just stuck her toe out, and the ball stuck right on it. But I know you as a former player not happy. The opportunity to play that shorter, the easier pass was there. Instead, that longer more optimistic pass played and all well, the defense came up with it. Well, she tried to make the ball, get the ball in behind the defense um, by shooting on the, by going on the inside of the defender instead of the outside. And Lowell, uh, the, the, being the good defender that she is, was defending from inside out, which is what you're supposed to do. She tried to force the ball on the inside of the defender. It wasn't there. Put the simple ball on the outside and hopefully get it across in the box is what she should have done. Great run here, looking for support still. And now finally the pass, all oh, round one defender shot, never came. Sometimes it's okay just to take a touch and take a shot. I know you, you sometimes your instincts wanna take three or four more touches to get around the defender. On that moment there, she should have taken the ball on her left foot and had a shot, even if, it's, even if it is her weaker foot. And Ferreira who has two game winners, two goals, two game winners this season. But as you so correctly said, and that's been the case for both of these teams, looking for that perfect opportunity. They have to uh, scale up their expectations back a bit. It goes and less there. Well, we spoke about Dina Orschman in the pregame. And you haven't really seen her get on the ball at all. She's been starved of any kind of possession this game so far. Is that the Bearcats defense doing a good job keen on her? Or is that her team and her midfield really not getting her the service that she needs? I think that's what it is. She just hasn't had the supply there. And maybe her movement off the ball has been a little lacking this game so far. What a summer she had. Spin it with the Germany U19 team. Uh, one way to spend your preseason. Well, she's playing on an extremely high level, playing with the German national team, and again, a semifinalist in the UEFA Women's Championships. The Mannschaft women as good as the men. The whistle blows. See the reaction there. Bearcats unhappy as the free kick will be for the Knights. Paris Nicoli from Finland, one of the seven countries represented on the UCF roster. Again, it's just a testament to both these programs and really the college system in general that they can attract these European players away from Europe and away from potentially professional soccer to sort of get an education and still play soccer at a high level. That's exactly right. You can play soccer, get an education, some of the best schools in the world. Huge opportunity, very difficult to pass up. It's still an opportunity to turn pro here in the States. 
Uh, or even in Europe. Uh, NWSL continues to gain in popularity every single week, it seems like. More people tuning into our Women's Professional League, and why not? I mean, if you watch some of those games, the caliber, the quality is absolutely outstanding. And the great thing for American players is they no longer have to go abroad. They can play professionally right here at home. That's absolutely true. The Ballon d'Or winner playing for the Houston Dash right now. Carly the world Lloyd. player of the season, absolutely. Cincinnati found themselves fortuitously with it, with it but looking for help, and again, it was a, just... A numerical mismatch. Cincinnati, it was a two on four, and rare that that's going to get it done. Fortunately, just no support up there going forward for Cincinnati. Now the Knights the other way, cutting through midfield. The Lowell there just sticks the leg out and wins it back. Take a look at some of the upcoming games we have here on the American Digital Network. There will be a good one tomorrow. Volleyball, Wichita and Temple, the Shockers and the Owls. It'll be a fantastic matchup here tomorrow on the American Digital Network. And then Sunday, a great men's matchup. The SMU Mustangs, Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Rolling, I believe you'll be on the uh, broadcast of that one. I'll be here and it will be exciting for sure. That's going to be something else. Two teams that have a fierce rivalry. Tulsa and SMU should be a great one. That'll be Sunday right here on the American Digital Network. We now go down to the sideline to check in with the third member of our crew, Matt Shoemaker. Thanks, guys. We continue to see players go down with cramping in this game. In the first half, it was a Cincinnati player, and now in the second half, it's a UCF player. We're getting ready to see massive substitutions, three players for each side. And even though the sun has gone down, it is still humid as heck out here at Cincinnati. Thanks, Matt. And as we said, it was hot and humid early on. Now it is just humid. The sun has gone down. But for these players, maybe maybe an advantage for the Knights. But it's it's a night player down on the field having to be stretched out. I would say that coming from Florida where they should be used to this heat. But the humidity so difficult. You're trying to rehydrate, trying to get fluids back in. You see the players doing that. They certainly did it at halftime. But I have a feeling we, uh, we may see a few more stoppages before the end of this one. I wouldn't be surprised. And sometimes those cramps are relentless. You can't, despite what you, no matter how much you, you know, massage it or stretch it out, they just keep coming back. And it's, it's really tough to recover from sometimes. The first game in the conference season, the intensity, is the physicality, everything has ramped up. You've seen it in this one. I mean, it was from the opening whistle, the opening kick. Very physical first half. It's continued here into the second and that is Kathleen Sosa. Not a good sign for the Knights that their star right back, the Brazilian, is the one who has the cramp. They certainly need her. Absolutely. She's been solid back there. She's been making tackles left and right, making some important clearances. Well, and she is going to miss her first minute of the season. She's the only Knight to have played every minute thus far on the year. She will have to at least miss one as they will tend to her and hopefully get there back out as quickly as possible. She's just such an important part of this UCF defense. Obviously playing every single minute of the season. You wouldn't want to see, see her be sidelined for very long. Back to the action. We'll see. I'm sure Cincinnati will just send it back to the Knights. And then we'll get things restarted. Roland, how big a factor do you think the, the weather has been in tonight, the, the heat and humidity in the first half and now the humidity here in the second? Well, sometimes, you know, if it's if it's extremely humid, uh, it can be a little hard to breathe. You know, it's just you cut the air with a knife sometimes. So you just, again, you just have to stay hydrated and hope for the best, really. Sometimes your body will just, uh, you know, freak out on you every now and then. Please puts it back into play. Just under 30 minutes remaining in the match. Still looking for the opener. Oh, good ball here. There we go. Swings it outside. Creighton. Heavy touch. Couldn't hold on. That was a nice bit of play from UCF there. Playing simple balls. 
taking her space, sprays the ball out wide. Unfortunately, Creighton has a bad, bad first touch. But here she is on the ball again. She takes a good one. Back to Creighton looking to make amends, finds a teammate. This is good build-up play so far. Lawrence comes forward and has it knocked out. Lawrence over to take the throw as changes coming. Both teams are making substitutions to get you those new additions as they become available to us. It appears that Creighton will be coming off of the Knights as well. There are two of the changes you saw as Cassie Weldon coming off. I believe it was Katie Kapuris as well, the senior from Colorado, off of the Bearcats. Throw off the mark and cleared away. This jointed play we've seen here in the second half from both teams is kind of come in fits and starts. You've seen some great buildup, some great passes, but then for whatever reason, you've seen that maybe a mental lapse, maybe a bad final ball, and neither team really able to come up with much of anything in the second. Well, I think Cincinnati has really dropped off offensively. They haven't had any any possession so far in the second half. They haven't been, been able to create um, even a half chance so far. UCF just really bossing possession and has, has had the few uh, sort of half chances so far this second half. UCF hoping they can turn their possession into a goal. Having said that, though, Cincinnati have been pretty sound defensively. We see UCF charging on the ball right now, and that's not a bad idea. That's a good ball in. To the top of the box, just about 18 inches off the intended target. Here's another look. Great ball played in that time. Came from Callahan. Callahan just too far for the intended target of Adamek. And that's a great little diagonal run there. Adamek just can't get, can't quite get on the end of that one. But again, you see, you're seeing it. You know, they're positive movement. You know, they're trying to make things happen. And I think so far, maybe in the last 10, 12 minutes, they have been a little bit more patient and keeping possession a bit better. Well, they went through that stretch in the first half. There was a good five or seven minute stretch where they totally dominated possession. I mean, they had the ball for almost all of it. And I'm sure they'd like to get back to that here in the second. This is a chance right here for Cincinnati to sort of keep possession, calm things down for them defensively. As you see here, you see UCF just with such a high work rate, putting such tough def su su uh, tough pressure on the Cincinnati back line. The free kick will be for the Knights. That time won by Adamek. Look at this pressure. Relentless, great tackle. Adamek battling was fouled and wins the free kick. That's great work from her. Coaches always talk about working twice as hard when you give up possession to try to get it back. That's exactly what Adamek did. A knock on a lot of forwards at all levels is they want the ball, but they're not going to work to get it back. That was not the case. Adamek doing everything she could. That's true. Both these teams have a very high work rate. Oh, shields it out for the corner, or excuse me, the goal kick, rather. Freshman Kiki Lowell continues to be outstanding here in the second half. And you can see the Knights, they're, they're not going at her as much as they did in the first half. They may have learned their lesson. Well, she's really stamped down that left-hand side of the defense for Cincinnati. Again, just so solid back there. And especially knowing that she's a freshman, uh, the sky's the limit for her. Fun to watch her career as it progresses. Bouncing around. Finally, Knight's able to settle it. It does Just, say something about this match that the most impressive player has been a left back. We knew it was going to be a defensive match. That was one thing we were sure of, but I think even you and I have been taken aback by the lack of offense from either one of these sides, really. I think for Cincinnati, it's been sort of a lack of creation of opportunities, but not so much for UCF. They've created the opportunities. I think it's just been a lack of a final ball and a lack of just sort of, you know, the guile to just take a rip every now and then. 
We saw that a few times. We saw it once at the end of the first half, saw it early here in the second. At both times, you were very pleased. Take that opportunity from distance. The worst that's going to happen is a save. And there's one right there. Ball bouncing around, stays out. Ferris punched it straight up and lucky that her defense able to clear it out of the box. Extremely lucky there. Almost a goal out of nothing. Almost, def almost a goalkeeping error, especially. And she did hit that ball straight into the underside of the crossbar. Here it is one more time. Punches it off of the crossbar, got a piece of it. Sosa there as well, and good thing she was. It's just a searching ball into the center of the box. And almost a goalkeeping blunder there for UCF. Will an error decide who comes up with the opener of this one? It almost did. Sometimes you see that happen. You know, you see one team dominating possession, having all the chances go their way. And then the other team sort of just take one chance and put the ball in the back of the net and win 1-0. Well, the, the opportunities that Cincinnati has had, especially here in the second, have come against the run of play because everything has been in favor of the Knights. Absolutely. But again, the Cincinnati team has tons of heart. They're not going to give up. They're going to keep trying to take advantage of any sort of opportunities that they're afforded by the CCF team. Now you see that they are... Mentioned Guile. There's a lot of it on that Bearcats side. They are not giving up, not capitulating by any stretch as they will make another change. Julie Kavorsky, the senior forward from Madison, Ohio, comes on for the Bearcats. Shot from distance, well off the mark. Rolling. This match may well come down to who is able to stick it out the longest, especially if we, we go into overtime with this match stays scoreless through 90 minutes. Who has the most left in the tank at the very end? Absolutely, and by, the, by this point in the season, they should both teams should be pretty fit. So they should be able to go at 100 miles an hour for, for 90 minutes. Lawrence looking for a teammate and has to take it short. And up over the top, not cleared away. Opportunity here for the Knights. Great tackle. And just trying to do too much that time was Orshman. One of the few times we've called Orshman's name in this match. In fact, I think it's the first time we have here in the second half. She finally got the ball at her feet and tried to run at one of her defenders. Again, Cincinnati, though, dealing with the trouble and eventually bails himself out. That defense again for Cincinnati comes up when it was needed most. And we've been saying bend but not break for Cincinnati, and they've been pretty far there with having Orschman in and around their six-yard area. Goes out just in front of the corner flag. It will be a throw. Just over 20 minutes remaining in the 90. The Bearcats make another change. Ipiku, the sophomore defender, comes back on. Ipiku is very impressive in the first half. Had some big tackles. And it looks like Cincinnati are going to continue to use that long throw tactic. It doesn't come off of them again this time. Heavy touch. It looks like UCF had something building. Back and forth. The speed of this one has really picked up in the last few minutes. A frenetic pace, almost helter-skelter from both teams. Looking to switch it up to the top. That's great hold-up play from Morshman. Good patience to find a cross-field ball and her right back finding space going forward. Finds the open space. One thing we haven't seen a lot here in the second half is teams switching play. Looking to find that space and take advantage. Lowell with another tackle. Goes to ground and able to knock it away. She's been a brick wall today. Stays. 
stays with the Knights. Cincinnati, the defense has been there, but they've got to figure out a way to turn defense into offense. Always a battle when these two get together. We knew that would be the case. Cincinnati having won the last two. They won down in Florida a year ago, got a two to nothing victory. They lead the series here in Cincinnati. Two victories, no losses, and one draw. Matches played here on the campus of the University of Cincinnati. Wayne and back into the center and electing to send it all the way back to Varis to retain possession. You know, I have no problem with that. They're not forcing balls forward in the air as they do just then and again lose possession. Roland, you said it a few minutes ago and I think it bears repeating. It stood out to me as well that UCF much more patient here in the second half than, than they were. They were kind of all hands on deck sending everyone as far forward as possible in the first half and here they're doing a good job maintaining their shape. They're maintaining their shape and they're finding feet more often than not. So a lot better on that front. Again, it's just about taking those chances and your movement off the ball as well. It's hard to find feet when you don't have teammates moving for you. Tried to go against Lowell yet again and Lowell says, hasn't happened all game. What makes you think it's gonna happen now? I say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. One thing is sure, when the Knights go at Kiki Lowell, the result has been the same through 74 minutes. Oh, Cincinnati, the opportunity there, but giving it right back to the Bearcats. One of those long searching balls that ultimately comes to nothing. Out it goes, deflected, and the throw will be to the Bearcats. Checking back in for Cincinnati is number six, Jordan Copper. Replacing number 18, Julie Nabrowski. Just over 15 minutes remaining. To find a goal or where will we be headed to overtime? Good ball in the top of the box, very nicely played. And Lowell again comes in out of nowhere to clean it up. Again, sometimes you just have to take a shot with your weaker foot even if you're not completely confident. That's a beautiful through ball and a very nice run. Took it off the foot of Katrina Kowalska. Here it is. And Lowell comes all the way from the top side of the pitch, all the way down into the box. And as you saw Kowalska, she tried to get the ball back on her right foot. But again, just great defending from Lowell. She comes in and makes the last ditch tackle. Concedes the corner. That's a great corner. Equally great defending from Cincinnati. Hit hard to the top of the six yard box, just like you wanted. You mentioned swinging it in there, but Bearcats able to knock it away. over the end line for a Bearcats goal kick. Oh, I mentioned a war of attrition in the first half, and that's certainly how this one has been shaping up. Time of possession, shots, shots on goal, all in favor of the Knights, but the only stat that matters, still scoreless. One thing you can say about both these teams is they have a lot of grit about them. They've shown a lot of heart. It really shown what this game means to them. Not only this particular game, but the game of soccer itself. Bose pulls it back. Sent in to the far post. Very nice. Goes down, referee says play on. 
Knights were looking for the penalty kick. They do not get it. I think that's the good call there. The officials done a very good job tonight. Now Cincinnati pass laid off. That's unfortunate for Cincinnati there. Just didn't have the support to get forward and create anything dangerous. Again, sometimes you just got to pull the trigger when you don't have, you know, players around you. But that midfield from Cincinnati has really got to push forward and provide support when they get into those attacking areas. What a match this has been. And consider this is the first game of the year in conference play. They're not taking any time to warm up. This isn't the middle of the conference season. This is game one in the American Athletic Conference. And if this is any indication of things to follow, we're in treat for a great season. Well, they're looking to set a tone early. I'm sure that's what the coaches would have told them in the locker room before the game. Set the tone for conference play. Barris off her line. That one bounces in. Looks like it's going to be offside. It will indeed. The linesman had the flag raised. You see right there, Kowalska saying it will not count. And no, it will not. The score remains. Well, it was either offside or a foul on the goalkeeper. Not exactly sure what exactly happened here. Take another look. Ferris off her line, didn't get anything, tried to get a punch to it. To me, that's a bad call. I don't see a foul on the goalkeeper or an offside. Not sure what the, what the referee is seeing there. Certainly wasn't any foul on the goalkeeper. Ferris didn't, come, didn't collide with anyone, didn't get a piece of the ball. So that the only possible explanation leaves an offside. Blindsman did have the flag raised. The Knights dodge a bullet as it remains scoreless. Could have been one of those cases again of what we talked about earlier. Sometimes the, the team with the, the least amount of possession and you know maybe even zero chances on the day can just get one and put the ball in the back of the net. That was very dangerous and very fortunate for UCF. It's a fickle game we love and a fickle game that these ladies play. They certainly know that, that everything can be going your way, be dominating, and then just one run against the run of play, and well, that's sometimes all you need to get the win. Almost the case there. It's terrible if it goes against you and wonderful if it goes for you. It all depends on what color you're wearing. Beautiful ball. Good ball outside. Plenty of space. Tries to go through the defender. Ball slips still. The shot comes deflected. It will simply be a free kick as the foul. No, I'm sorry. Actually, Les was able to keep it in somehow. I thought that one trickled out. She was able to get her hand to it and keeps it from going over the inline. Well, Piku did a great job defensively there. Very physical. Really put the UCF attacker off the ball. Now both teams making a pair of changes. Get some fresh legs in here for the remaining 10 minutes. See one of the new additions there. Riley Grinbaum. Grinbaum coming on. And Lowell coming off. Lowell may not have much left in the tanker. Is this, uh, if you're Coach Stafford, you think we're going to overtime? Do you want to rest her for the overtime? Or is this... Uh, just, it, it could even be a change of shape. They could be going to three center backs and, and you know, trying to pour, pour numbers forward. Ten minutes remaining in the 90. Based on performances, though, it is a little bit baffling. So it could just be uh, a change of shape and a tactical change. Also, the freshman has been fantastic. And her first year as a collegiate player, she may just be, she may have just run out of gas quite simply. And no one can blame her. She's been running her, just running her boots off, and you know, just been playing a stellar game so far. Yeah, she's done a fantastic job. It appears that there are still four in the back for the Bearcats, at least from our vantage point, looking to push those wing backs further and further up the field. Both teams know time is of the essence. They both would like to get the winner here in the 90. Neither wants to have to go to overtime. Humidity is already. Been a huge factor, great goalkeeping, less off the line and able to come up with it. Great goalkeeping indeed. Really commands her box. That's not, that's a nice little dink ball over the top. 
This is very difficult for a goalkeeper. Coming off the line, you have to judge it. You can't collide. You've got to realize that you're going to get to it first. And when you make that decision as a goalkeeper, there's no second guessing. It is off the line, going to it as quickly as you can. Absolutely. Once you've decided, you're, you're going. There's no turning back. You, you can't stay around in no man's land because that's how you give up a goal. That's a, just what I was going to say. You see a lot of goals. The goalkeeper goes out two or three steps. They second guess, try to backpedal, and all of a sudden the net is left wide open. Well, what we've seen for both goalkeepers is confidence. You know, both have, have done well at commanding their box and not afraid to come out and, and challenge the opposing attacker. Dvorsky sends it in, looking for a teammate, but just bounces out for the goal kick. Ferris in no real hurry. Ben finally puts it back into play. Cincinnati going the other way, able to ride out a tackle. Great work there. J.C. Brown, Brown, the senior. That's good defensive work there from Lauren Nemiroff, as well as a nice tackle from Sosa. We're going to see here. Here's Nemiroff just shepherding that ball out for a goal kick. And Brown, a name we have not mentioned much this evening, and that's certainly not what I would have thought the way that she's been playing this year. She's been an integral to the Bearcats, but mentioned... Orshman, Orshman, who we thought would be a big part of this game, hadn't seen the ball, and Brown, well, she hasn't either. Absolutely. It, it, it's been up to these, the, the rest of this UCF team to really come up big after their star players haven't really had, again, the supply that they've, need, they've needed. Lawrence, the throw finds its target. Physical defending Knight still with it. Now ball played into the box. Headed away. Here to the near side. Speaking of Orshman, able to keep it in. Orshman cuts back. Orshman the shot. Less does a good job. Comes up with a clean save, and she had to as Ferrer was lurking. Well, here you go, Orshman on the ball. Take that second touch is just a little farther than she would have liked. It's not able to get enough of her foot on it as she would have liked, of course. Adam Eck from the outside. That one pressed around the post, and it'll be a corner coming for UCF. Probably the most dangerous uh, shot put in so far for UCF. It was a pretty decent save here. It's a tough angle. She puts it near post, but again, it's a nice save on that one. Can see the corner kick. Team captain Adam Eck comes up with a big shot there. Not sure if that one was on goal, but last she couldn't chance it. Now Lawrence with the corner, the outswinger. Played nicely. Looked like a corner to me. Jill's there doing a great job shielding Adam Eck. And it will indeed be a corner, this time coming from the near side for the Knights. It's nice pressure from Adam Eck. Getting the Cincinnati defender to concede a corner. They've been lofting those balls in there, putting a lot of backspin and a lot of air on the back of them. I'd like to see one hit with pace. Jills has played every minute so far this season. The defensive stalwart climbing the ladder, now 10th all-time in minutes. That one just goes across a dangerous ball. Well, they got a header on it, and that was, again, a, a ball hit with pace, and they got a header on it. Shot from the top of the box off the underside of the crossbar stays out. Unbelievable. Again, just take your shots. You've seen they just hit the crossbar. They can continue to be dangerous. And another dangerous opportunity for a free kick here. This one at the top of the box, just a few meters outside the 18. Take another look at this shot. With the movement on it, it, it caught the crossbar flush. And it had to, or it would be one to nothing UCF. Keeper had no chance. It was a wonderful shot on goal. 
unfortunately, just maybe like four inches too high. So Ferreira wins the dangerous free kick for the Knights. He's on top of it. Let's see who takes it here. Step over, Ferreira takes it into the wall and knocked away. The wall does its job perfectly. Unfortunate for UCF that they can't take advantage of another dangerous opportunity. But again, Cincinnati just being brave in defense, getting in front of that free kick, keeping the scoreline no nil. So Varis is able to press one off the crossbar the other way, and then the shot that time comes off the crossbar. Still scoreless as more changes coming on in the final three minutes. And that one less. Well, we've seen games in that way. She plays it right off the head of Ferreira. Take another look. Sometimes when you take chances like that and you push forward and you put pressure, you can be fortunate. And that was almost fortunate there for Ferrer. That one just about two feet to the left of the poster. That would have made it one to nothing. And things are really heating up here at the end. Both teams looking for the winner in 90. Neither wants to go to overtime. Cincinnati have been a little bit more vulnerable since Lowell went off and she just came back on. It's like another panic sub. They need to say, get back out there. We need you to solidify that defense for us the last couple minutes. And yeah, Coach Stafford saw what was happening and he said, do you have anything left? All right. You're in, kid. Whatever you have, we need it for the next two minutes and then you can get a break. The way Kiki Lowell's played tonight, you certainly understand that decision. Another searching ball, the defense first to it. And as I say that, Cincinnati able to come up with it. And deflected out, the throw will be to the Knights. 90 seconds remaining in regulation. We'll be headed to overtime in the conference opener here in the, Amer in the American Athletic Conference. Ball. Goes to the ground, still finds a way to win the ball back. Can't say enough about how tough she's been today. Just a freshman, and she has been outstanding. Have a shot. Top of the box, opportunity looking. Took too long, and the opportunity expired. And then Sophie Gorman getting the ball at the top of that box. She's got to take one touch and then a shot. You take too many touches, you give the opposing defender time to close in on you. I know for you, Roland, as a former player, one thing you're shaking your head, you're, 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 extorting, you're extorting her here. You take the shot, take the shot. And she elected not to, and as you so correctly said, gave that defender time to come in, close down, and ultimately the opportunity was no more. Again, as a defender, you hope that attacker takes too many touches because you might be slightly out of position. Uh, you know when they get on the ball so if they take two or three too many touches that gives you time to close in and make the tackle And as an attacker sometimes you want to find the perfect window you want to find the perfect opportunity to put the ball uh, in, in, in upper 90 and, and you know get all the glory but you know sometimes when you're playing a tough team like Cincinnati or you're playing a tough team like UCF those chances don't come those perfect opportunities never present themselves and you got to take advantage of those half to half chances and just, just try to score an ugly goal sometimes. Yeah, back into play. Final few seconds remaining here in the second half. Is there a chance for the Bearcats at the end? Last, it's tackled by Sosa. And that will do it for the 90 minutes. Time has expired. Scoreless between the Knights and the Bearcats. Live from Gettler Stadium here in Cincinnati. And we are headed to overtime between UCF and Cincinnati. We'll have the first overtime period when we return on the American Digital Network. When I came into this classroom, we had 30 desks, 30 chairs, a teacher's desk. That was it. Donors Choose is the greatest, simplest idea. Teachers put up materials they need. You, as a donor, choose a school. And you can fund part of a project or the entire project. It is magic. The donors choose, you know exactly where it goes, every dime. They feel like somebody in this country cares about me and my potential. 
and that's a powerful thing. People say we're big. Wow. Well, what is big? This is big. It's an energy. An opportunity. This is big, baby! So go on. Dream big. Because big is just the beginning. I got it. <laughs> For every hero, there is an origin story, an experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling, offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. Welcome you back to Cincinnati. Gettler Stadium here on the campus of the University of Cincinnati for the opener in the American Athletic Conference. No score through 90 minutes between the visiting UCF Knights and the host Cincinnati Bearcats. So we will go to overtime. The first overtime period, it'll be 10 minutes. If we are still scoreless, we will head to another 10 minute overtime period. If we are scoreless at the end of the 20 minutes of overtime, the match will end in the draw. We will not have penalty kicks to decide this one. Well, that's a bummer. I was looking forward to it. <laughs> penalty kicks are a love of or hate of proposition. People, huge fans, obviously, for the drama and the excitement. Talk to the players. A lot of players say, we're working this hard. You're working for 110 minutes, and then you ultimately lose in penalty kicks. Kind of uh, leaves a sour taste in some of their mouths. But we don't have to worry about that tonight. Again, as a neutral, you know, you love the drama of penalties. But as a player, you know, at the end of a 110-minute game, you're sort of mentally broken. Well, you talk about the 90 minutes that we've seen so far. It has been back and forth. Players absolutely spent. And the question is, who has the most left in the tank in this one? We now go down to the sideline to check in with the third member of our, pro of our broadcast crew, our sideline reporter, Matt Shoemaker. Thanks, guys. I got a chance to talk with UC head coach Neil Stafford going into this first overtime. He said he was really pleased with how UC took the game to UCF in the second half, the energy that they brought matching what UCF did to them in the first half. He said the key to this overtime is being sharper in the final third, that offensive third here in overtime number one. And on the other side for UCF, they really just want their players to be smarter mentally and bring more energy in this overtime. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Matt. Great stuff. And what a luxury it is to have him down there on the sideline, able to talk to the coaches, hear what they're saying, saying to their players. And again, Roland, you uh, sounding like a prophet. That's that's what you said. You've got to be better in the final third. You have to take advantage of the chances. And we saw some of those for Cincinnati at the, the end of regulation. They had chances, elected not to pull the trigger, gave UCF defense time to, gr to drop back, able to knock it away. And for UCF, not as many chances in the second half as they had in the first. Uh, probably not. No, I think that's a testament to Cincinnati just being uh, a little bit more compact defensively and a little bit more hard-nosed. They were, I think they were a little bit, even a little bit more physical in the second half than they were in the first. And UCF did have a bunch of chances, but again, just the physicality and strength of that Cincinnati back line uh, really snubbed most of their chances. I think when Lowell came off, uh, Cincinnati looked visibly less compact in the back line. They looked a little bit more vulnerable, and UCF almost took took advantage of that vulnerability. Uh, but again, just still nil-nil. Both teams hard nose, and also very technical teams. So who who knows what happens in this in this overtime? That's a great question. They certainly didn't look as confident defensively without the star freshman there. We get ready for the first overtime period here in Cincinnati. We'll take one more break and we'll get back to the action right after this on the American Digital Network. People say we're big. Wow. Well, what is big? This is big. It's an energy. An opportunity. This is big, baby! So go on. 
dream big. Because big is just the beginning. I got it. <laughs> For every hero, there is an origin story, an experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling, offering a different kind of education, one guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. Start of the first overtime period in Cincinnati, live from Gettler Stadium. And, well, the first conference game of the season. So good. We had to go to overtime, and certainly it has been the case, even though it's a scoreless draw thus far. It's been very entertaining. It's been back and forth, defensive battle between these two. And Neil Stafford, his side, off to their best start ever in program history, his fifth-year head coach. And the one thing you can say about him, or you can say a lot about him, but I think one of the most impressive things about his program is they've gotten better each and every year. They've gotten more wins every year that he's been the head man. Well, again, it's just another mark of a of a good coach, of getting the best out of whatever players you have, you know, especially sometimes coming in as a new coach. You sort of don't have the players you recruited. But, again, a great coach gets the best out of the players that are at, uh, that are at his disposal. And I think he's done that so far. And, again, you said he's – you know, just improved every single year of this team. And it's just a tes testament to his philosophy and, and his man management as well. The team has improved. They've certainly made a bigger mark, not just in Cincinnati, but across Ohio in the Midwest, starting to get those players that maybe a few years ago weren't considering Cincinnati. Now saying, I'll stay home and play for this Bearcats program, one of the best around. There's no reason to have to go anywhere else. You mentioned such a great soccer city. Cincinnati, great fans, continues to grow. And, well, it's easy when you've got a team like FC Cincinnati in the USL and a team like these Bearcats right here. And as I said before, sort of this mentality of this team is sort of bending but not breaking and being gritty and tough in defense and, you know, at the same time trying to be technical and get forward and play beautifully is sort of the, the, the same with the city of Cincinnati, you know what I mean? They're survivors, they're tough, they're hard-nosed, they're gritty. I think it's a great analogy. Is there, And you see that a lot of times the teams kind of take that. They take on the persona of the city, of the region they play in, and that has definitely been the case for this Bearcats women's team is they are. They are hard-nosed, they are gritty, they are defensively minded, bend but don't break. I don't know how many times we've said it tonight, but rightfully so. That back line has come up huge. It's looked like for all the world that UCF is going to find the opener, they're able to get through, and then at the very last second, one of those Bearcat defenders is able to get just enough to it. And that is why we are scoreless here at the beginning of overtime. Again, they've just been sacrificing their bodies all game, not afraid to throw themselves into a challenge, not afraid to throw themselves in front of the ball, in front of that goal mouth. And you like to see that. You like to see the heart from these players. It's going to be another corner for Cincinnati. We'll see what kind of danger they can, they can create for this UCF back line. And you see them lined up three, three by three on the top of that 18-yard box. They have a plan going into this corner. Let's see if they can execute. Players streaming in, headed away. Not the service you're looking for. Back in it goes and just too far. Ultimately, it just comes to a goal kick. Well, as successful as they've been defensively, they've been equally unsuccessful going forward. Every single time they've had any kind of dangerous opportunity, whether it be a corner or a free kick in and around the 18-yard box, they've been unsuccessful at you know, creating any kind of, of danger for this UCF back line. They've certainly scored goals this season. Have the Bearcats started things off with a 4 nothing victory over Northern Illinois. They took down Indiana in exhibition 3-1. Goals have been hard to come by for both teams tonight. That went off the post. It might have been pressed up. I think Les got enough of it. Put it into the upper 90 and stays out. Another bar that the woodwork, another ball the woodwork keeps out of the back of the net. 
And that was Orshman showing great patience around the top of the 18-yard box. Here she is on the ball. She gets around her defender, stays tough, gets a shot on goal, and it's actually a decent save. Strong paw up in the air. The Cincinnati goalkeeper gets her team out of trouble again. Less a fingertip to it, and she had to get it or it'd be one to nothing. And you can't how many times the, have we said that tonight? Well, you see the talent level of Orshman there. When she finally does get on the ball, you see what she can create in that attacking area. Played in and over the top. Now, Orshman hasn't had the ball very often at her feet, but when she has, so dangerous. You see the German under-19 international. Well, you see, you know, one of our keys to the game for Cincinnati was to sort of shut down Orshman and Ferreira. And they've sort of done that up until now. But then you see here Orshman finally getting on the ball, finding a little bit of space, using her physicality to get past that Cincinnati back line, getting a nice shot on goal. And unfortunately for her, Les came up with a world-class save. Now you said it with physicality. She rode out the tackle, did a good job, didn't go down, stayed up, and was able to get that shot off. She did a great job just shielding the ball from the defender. And again, just staying physical, keeping her body between the defender and the ball. And eventually getting a nice shot off. Another long ball. And that one well read by that UCF defense. Now UCF the other way. Just as I say that one back. All kinds of space and coming in to win it yet again. And that's Cincinnati defense. Cincinnati looking to go the other way. We're in overtime and you're seeing how hard these girls are running. Just giving their all, leaving it all on the pitch. The free kick coming for the Bearcats. This one in a dangerous position, looking to swing it in. But sorry, wins it for Cincinnati. How can they take advantage with the set piece? Again, another dangerous opportunity for Cincinnati. What can they come up with here? They need a quality ball whipped into the box. The reason why I like balls to be whipped in with pace is because any kind of deflection could put the ball in the back of the net. And that's a nice ball in. Good service. That one in the six-yard box, headed away. But the whistle. It'll be a free kick for UCF. And it doesn't come off of them there come off for them there but you see the chaos that it creates UCF didn't clear the ball in their first attempt and that ball could have gone anywhere like I said before that's a great point when you play that ball in hard when you play it with pace harder for defenders to get a beat on it if it takes a deflection harder for the goalkeeper to come up with a save and it always it all, just, all it needs is just a slight deflection off of you know an attacker's head and it can go in the back of the net Played up to the top. Plenty of space for the Knights. Very Great nice. ball. Very nice. You see the patient buildup, and unfortunately, they give the ball away there. But like I said before, they're playing the ball to feet instead of just going route one. And Mernon was wide open. The final ball behind her. That shot deflected. Never reaches goal. So it's Cincinnati who's had more possession and better opportunities here in the first overtime period. It's a good idea from Gorman to spray the ball out wide into, pay, into space. Unfortunately, just slightly overhit. Nemiroff with the throw. Cincinnati back with it. A re-energized Bearcats team here in overtime. Ball takes it herself over the midfield stripe. Showing her confidence not only defending but going forward, and that was a good ball in. This one will stay in. Just barely. And the shot just off the mark. That was the chance. Came off the boot of Jill Vitari. Vitari, the junior, knew it. A great turn, 
but just wide of the post. That's a great opportunity. That's what you wanted to see. She had her back to goal. She took a decent first touch and a turn with a shot. Instead of taking two or three more touches or trying to find the perfect opportunity, she took one decent touch and had a turn and had a shot. It didn't come off with her from her this time. That's what you want to see. Yeah, sense of urgency from the forwards when they get the ball in the box. You don't have time to play with it at your boots. You've got to take it quickly. You ever see Cincinnati trying to be a bit more dangerous, whipping those balls into the box at every opportunity? This overtime, the first nine minutes, they've been a lot more dangerous than they've been this entire match, probably. I think you're exactly right. They've dominated. This is a different Cincinnati team than we saw in the first 90 minutes. They were all defensive in here, opening things up. They've had some opportunities. Sorry, shot just wide of the post. Good ball. Oh. Sometimes with this turf, you know, you think you have a perfectly weighted ball, but it just keeps on rolling. The ball plays very fast on turf like this. Final few seconds here in the first overtime. Still scoreless. If it remains that way, we will head to a second 10-minute overtime period. Again, no penalty kicks looming. And that will do it. Ten minutes remaining to find a winner in the conference opener between Cincinnati and UCF. We'll take a break. The final ten minutes of this one when we return on the American Digital Network. People say we're big. Well, what is big? This is big. It's an energy. An opportunity. Big, so go on. Dream big. Because big is just the beginning. I got it. <laughs> this is big. For every hero, there is an origin story. An experience that made them who they are. For a new generation of explorers, pioneers, and innovators, that experience is calling. Offering a different kind of education. One guided by distinguished professors who understand experience is the best teacher. Greatness lies beyond the classroom. This is where you start. University of Cincinnati. Do more. 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Ten minutes remaining. Will we find a winner in the conference opener? It has been scoreless through 100 minutes between UCF and Cincinnati here at Gettler Stadium. So glad you could join us on the American Digital Network and hope you can join us for some of the great games we have upcoming. Start things off tomorrow. A big volleyball match between Wichita and Temple. That's going to be fantastic. The Shockers and the Owls. And then back to the field on Sunday. We've got a fantastic men's match between the SMU Mustangs and the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Roland will be on the call with that, along with the great Lincoln Rose. Should be a lot of fun, all on the American Digital Network. So I hope you'll join us for some of those. And reminded that uh, for those of you with Smart TV, you can easy watch on the YouTube app. So make sure you watch all these American Digital Network games wherever you are. So pleased to have you with us. Ten minutes remaining to find a winner in this one. First game of the conference season, it has lived up to the hype and a defensive battle between the Knights and the Bearcats. Well, this this first half of the, the, the 10 minutes of overtime really sort of changed the, the, the complexity of this game. You really saw Cincinnati come on the front foot and, and uh, have some really good attacking chances in stark contrast to the rest of the game. You know, they were just pretty much compact in their defensive shell and didn't really get many offensive opportunities. But in the, the first half of overtime there, they really came into their own 
and has some really dangerous opportunities going forward. And it was UCF who were on the back foot. In eight matches between these two, the series tied at three wins apiece. Cincinnati has won the last two. But as we mentioned earlier, UCF has won their last four American Athletic Conference openers, looking to make it five in a row. Cincinnati in the home black. They dominated in the first overtime period and looking to do so here early in the second. Searching ball to the top of the box, but not a Bearcat in the vicinity. Well, they had just a nice spell of like four or five passes there to feet. They did well to, to, to sort of get out of danger and keep possession. And then that whip ball to nobody really just killed their offensive momentum. I know that's one thing you've been shaking your head about frustrated tonight is the buildup has been there. The final ball is not. Take it takes the deflection, stays in play. Another big tackle as Lowell comes in to clean it up. This young lady is something else. She's so tough. And we've seen before, you know, she's a great defender and, you know, she's made great tackles, but you've seen she hasn't put a foot wrong yet. She's been making some nice passes from that left pack position. Extremely technical, has a high soccer IQ. She's been very impressive. Freshman from Kitchener, Ontario, Kiki Lowell. And the Bearcats have brought a very good one south of the border. Lawrence. Two defenders able to get by him. Tight ropes to the sideline, still in. That was a nice bit of skill there. Now the Bearcats sending it up the line. The Bearcats rejuvenated, reinvigorated. Very nice. In overtime. Great ball. Oh, it was a great idea. Varis. Off her line just before the on-rushing Bearcat forward. I'll tell you what, this has been a different Cincinnati in this overtime. You're seeing their work rate go up offensively. They're really trying to pour forward. They're trying to get that W here at home. Yeah, if you're a Cincinnati fan, you've got to be asking, where's, where's this team? Where, where was this team in the first 90 minutes? Absolutely, completely different team than in the first 90 minutes here in the second or in the second half of overtime. It's been box to box, fighting, winning, loose balls. We've really seen the midfield and the forwards step up. It was all the defense, all that back line in regulation. We've seen a real sense of urgency for them going forward. And again, Kiki Lowell just coming in tough. Wins another tackle, does Lowell. Great Good ball. ball up top. Cuts it back inside some room. The final ball just off the mark. There's a nice little bit of possession there from Cincinnati again, staying very patient. Not trying to force balls where they they shouldn't. I feel like if they had more time in this overtime, they could really break open this UCF defense. Again, it makes you wonder where they've been in the first 90 minutes. And you've got a feeling that's the question that Neil Stafford and his staff will be talking about. Have they played this way for the 90 minutes? Chances are they would not be in overtime. They're going to have to figure out a way to play that way in regulation, not have to wait until overtime as the conference season progresses. They'll be spending some time in the film room. Coach Stafford will be pointing out all the good opportunities that they created offensively in this overtime period. Tell them that they need to be doing those things more consistently. Now look at that ball sent in by Lawrence. Big collision there. And for UCF, a team that dominated, certainly in the first half, maybe a bit less so in the second, but they've been the one who've been bossed around. They're, they're the ones chasing, looking to get possession in overtime. Right. Uh, I mean, in, in this overtime, it seems like Cincinnati have got, caught a second wind. And contrastly, it seems like you know UCF has really you know dropped down a level.
Five minutes remaining in the match. Again, no possibility of penalty kicks. If this one ends in a draw, well, it will certainly, it will simply end in a draw. Some chaos going on in the back line of Cincinnati there. Finally cleared away. Who wants it? Who has enough left in the tank for that final push? Who can find the goal? We've seen shots just off the mark. Great saves from goalkeepers. Shots off the woodwork. Just about everything, but we have not seen a goal this evening. That's a good ball in. Again, just that Cincinnati defense just swarming to the ball. Here's Sophie Gorman. Let's see what she can create here. That Cincinnati mentality, the tough, gritty. Again, their unofficial motto, do you. They're just worried about them, no one else. Here's an opportunity for UCF to whip a ball into the box. Yeah, the free kick coming. You see Pavlika, the senior from Michigan, goes into the tackle. And here it is. Yeah, you see her at the end. And Pavlika unhappy that was called against her. Physical challenge could go either way. Here comes a free kick. Punched away. Plus the freshman goalkeeper with another save. And now the free kick coming for the Paracats as Sophie Gorman scrapes herself off the turf. Clear foul there. Just trying to break up that momentum of Cincinnati's offense. Three minutes remaining. They're a winner out there somewhere. Cincinnati doing a great job of just swarming to the ball and not really giving UCF any kind of openings to even play defeat. And they're putting great pressure in the midfield and in defense. That's defending in mass for the Bearcats. Meantime, a knight has it. There are two, sometimes three defenders in black there immediately. Back it goes. Poor pass picked off. That's a good tackle. Another hard tackle. Referee says play on. UCF all the way back in their own end. Plenty of space. Lawrence drives that one, but looking for Creighton. Creighton had already halted a run. Time running out here. Let's see if Cincinnati can create anything off of this goal kick. Less than 90 seconds remaining. Looks like a clash of heads here. That was a tough challenge coming in from behind. The yellow card is going to be coming out here. Horseman bounces back up, and the yellow card will be issued to Julie Gavorsky. It's a tough challenge there. Both going for the ball, nothing malicious in it, but definitely a clash of heads, and that's unfortunate to see. Horseman back up and ready to get back into the action. Hoping she's going to be able to net the game winner. Knights bringing everyone forward. Realize this may well be their last chance. We mentioned in the first half, our center referees done a very good job tonight. He's kept things under control. He hasn't blown the whistle when it, when it wasn't necessary. That's really all you can ask for in an official. Well, it's been nice because both teams have been very physical. And 
you know, that's part of the entertainment as a viewer, you know, to see two teams just really going at it and, and seeing the heart that they play with. And uh, this referee is, you know, sort of let play go on and let things sort, sort themselves out. So it's been, it's been a pleasure to watch this one. The clock stopped, 8.46. Just a minute 14 from that witching hour, the 10 minute mark. Here in the second overtime, scoreless through 100 minutes. Will we go scoreless through 110? Ball flying into the box now. Cincinnati again just resolute in the back attacking the ball meeting it at its highest point remember UCF they have an overtime victory they got one earlier this year over the North Carolina Tar Heels very nice bit of skill there here to the near side another heavy touch just enough for the Bearcats to come in and clean it up. Now Cincinnati looking to go the other way, but Sosa not letting that happen. You see Kathleen Sosa out there with a limp and giving it her all. What a warrior is the Brazilian. And that was good defending from her. You see the challenge is coming thick and fast here in this one. Neither team wants to share the points. And a free kick. This for be, Cincinnati. This could be the last bit of danger here for Cincinnati. They want to, UCF's going to stop them from playing it quickly. Good heads up play there defensively from the Knights, getting on the ball, not allowing Cincinnati to take the free kick. Take another look at the foul. That was absolutely a foul. Very late challenge. Seven seconds remaining in the second and final overtime period. The free kick right into the hands of Varys. And that's poor from Cincinnati there. The last bit of dangerous play that they could have had, and it goes straight to the goalkeeper's hands. And that will do it. So the match ends scoreless after 110 minutes. Teams will have to share the spoils in the first match of the 2017 American Athletic Conference season, scoreless between UCF and Cincinnati from Gettler Stadium. Rolling your thoughts. Well, this game had it all, didn't it? You know, it had tons of attacking play in the first 90 minutes, mostly from UCF, creating some nice chances um, from un unlikely sources. You know, or they sort of, uh, the Cincinnati back line sort of shut down Ferreira and Orshman, uh, but the rest of that team stepped up, at least in the first 90 minutes. But then when you saw in overtime, you know, Cincinnati really came into their own and uh, provided a bit of a spark for the rest of their team, and they had some chances of their own. Unfortunately for both teams, neither could find the back of the net, and it ends nil-nil, but an entertaining one, entertaining one nonetheless. So Cincinnati back in action on Sunday. They will host USF right here at Gettler Stadium and UCF on the road. They will head down to East Carolina as we now go down to Matt Schumacher as he is on the sidelines with the Knights head coach. Matt trying to track down Coach Sahadak, and understandably so. Coaches always want to get a word with their players. We will be joined by Coach Robert Sahadak momentarily. She will join the third member of our broadcast crew. But again, a big thanks to all of you joining us tonight on the American Digital Network. It has been a great start to the season. And I know you and I as soccer fans always glad when the fall rolls around and we get to get back into the action. Soccer season is always fun and You'd love to see two teams like this who are very technically skilled and, uh, you know, really just evenly matched. You know, we see it in the scoreline, you know, with nil-nil, both teams just canceling themselves out. And, you know, it's good when you have a team that is as talented as both of these that, you know, it's still entertaining. So now head down to the sidelines to check in with Matt. Thanks, guys. Coach. What a battle. First conference game on the road. You guys have had some tough games already this season, but what did you learn about your team here tonight? 
I mean, we, you said it. It was a battle. Um, playing Cincinnati at their place is always very difficult. We always have a hard time here. So, um, you know, but credit to both teams because you can tell it's conference play right now. It's like championship game every, every time we go up against each other. What do you and your 14th ranked team take away from this game and how do you build on it moving forward? I mean, there's so many takeaways. Obviously, I have to watch video and, <laughs> and probably come up with some tactical things. But, um, you know, we learned that we can we can there, set pieces is a huge thing. Um, and, and dealing with um, they're so dangerous in the air. So we've got to get better in the first balls, um, second balls. Um, but, you know, on the positive side, I thought we did a really good job with the pressure mm -hmm. and keeping the ball under pressure and still maintaining our attack. Coach, thanks so much and good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, thank you. Guys. Back Thanks, Matt. That'll do it for us. Big thanks to all of you for joining us. For my partner, Roland Garensway, I'm Kit McConico. A great start to the 2017 American Athletic Conference women's soccer season. Went to overtime, but ultimately ended scoreless between the Knights of UCF and the Cincinnati Bearcats. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We will see you next time right here on the American Digital Network. The final 0-0 between Cincinnati and UCF.